that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. We're looking at Luke chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 49. Luke chapter 24. We're reading from verse 49. Yeah, it's still telling us about that promise. It says in Luke chapter 24, verse 49. And behold, I said, the promise of my Father upon you. The promise that Peter, the apostle, referred to is the promise of the Father. And he said, the Lord Jesus Christ said, I send this unto you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high. Until, until 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 you will keep on telling until you'll keep on praying until you'll keep on seeking until you'll keep on expecting until you'll keep on knocking at the gate at the door of heaven until you keep on asking and seeking and knocking until you be deal with power from on high have you noticed the people that, you know, they are knocking at the door and knocking at the door and just a minute before the door is open, they say, it looks like there's nobody there. Then they give up and then they go away. And then they come back. When you come back again, you have to start the fire again. You have to kindle the fire again. You have to start knocking again. Then you start knocking and knocking and knocking. And just about 30 seconds, half a minute, before the door is open, then you say, why is it that this fellow is never answering? Then you go back again. By the time they open the door, you are gone. You come back again, you might be doing that for about 10 times or 12 times or 100 times, just missing it by one minute. But the Lord is saying, don't miss it today. Yeah. You will not miss it in Jesus' name. Yeah. That you keep on knocking, keep on tarrying, keep on waiting, and keep on asking the Lord. And you know, sometimes as we come together like this, there are people that say, hey, oh, why is the jest, you know, making us to stand up all this long time? I'm not making you to stand up. I just thought that you wanted something. And then if you want something, you are telling the Lord, you are saying, now if you go to, you know, you go to somebody that is give, going to give you the resources of your life that will make you achieve and make you get everything you want to get in life. Are you going to sit down and then cross your leg and say, I just came to ask whether all these resources that will make me successful and fruitful and make me an achiever, I, I, you are crossing your leg and sitting down and you're doing like this. I just want to know whether you are going to give me, what will the fellow do to you? <laughs> say this, Lord, look at this one. He's, he came with all his pride, but you stand up. You stand up. And if what you are looking for is more than that minor pain in your leg, more than that minor pain you're feeling and you're bombarding heaven for the promise is unto you and to your children and to them that are far off, even as many as the Lord your God, our God, shall call. And the Lord said, you tarry in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And Jesus said, these are the words of Jesus. He talked about praying and praying and praying and praying and turning and waiting, waiting upon the Lord until ye be a deal with power from on high, enveloped, surrounded, closed, put inside, immersed with that power, an ocean of power from on high. The Lord will do it. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. I read from verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. But, what's the next word? Wait. But wait for the promise of the Father, says he, which says he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence the lord it will not be many days he will just keep on he didn't tell them 10 days it became 10 days finally but he didn't tell them it just said not many not many days hence and when the lord is saying you know just, you will just say some time we're going to pray some time we're going to seek the lord some time we're going to give ourselves to the lord and we're going to wait we're going to tarry the resources of heaven the power from on high and that envelope of anointing from on high is worth all the waiting i said it's worth all the waiting and whatever you have to wait whenever you have to wait and whatever time you have to wait for to get it you are going to get it today everybody say power, power. 
it is coming in Jesus name because I know you will tarry I said you will tarry I said you will wait and when you wait and you get it nothing will be able to stand before you in Jesus name now it talks about the power of the Holy Ghost but all the other promises of God are yes and amen look at 2nd Corinthians chapter 1 Second Corinthians chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 20. For all the promises of God are in him. Uh, yea, that means yes, and in him, amen. So let it be unto the glory of God by us. It tells us there that all the promises, when it says all the promises, when it says and the promises unto you, we can apply this to every promise. The promise of eternal life unto you, to your children, to those that are far off. The promise of cleansing our heart taking away the damnic nature and the stony heart the promises unto you and to your children and to them that are far off and the promise of healing the promise is unto you and to your children and to them that are far off and the promise that every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon i have given unto you the promises unto you and to your children and also to all them that are far off every promise of the word of god everything we read here that god says i will do this i will do this i will do that that promise is unto you and to all that are far off and the lord will do it for us in jesus name when it says all that means it's universal universal everybody and it's unlimited all the promises even the unusual power of the holy ghost the lord will grant to us in jesus name three things we're going to look at number one desiring god's universal promise all everybody all everybody god giving it to all desiring god's universal promise number two demanding that's asking god's unlimited provision demanding that's asking requesting demanding god's unlimited provision number three declaring god's the gospel with unusual power declaring the gospel with unusual power when you have this power of the holy ghost the lord will turn you and change you to another man you'll not be like you were before things will change i said things will change the declaration of the gospel proclamation of the gospel preaching of the gospel everything will change because you come with new anointing and new power i even pray that before the preaching ends up i will come upon you because it's still possible god has not changed while peter was speaking in the house of cornelius the holy ghost came upon all them that had the word and all of us here today you are candidates for renewed power renewed anointing and renewed authority coming upon your life in jesus name let's come to number one let's come to number one designing god's universal promise we're looking at acts of the apostles chapter 2 acts chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 16 over there acts chapter 2 verse 16 the holy ghost came upon the people in the early in the early church you are know, watching in the upper room and then the people came together because of what they heard and what they saw they thought they were drunk and then peter rose up and said these people are not drunk it's just the third hour of the day in verse 16 but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. I'm going to tell you something very important. Look up here, everybody. And you know, sometimes there are people that they read the Bible and they pick, they, they pick just a little thing there. And that little thing is the only thing they think about. But I want to tell you something that this that I read to you now, that Peter just rose up. And I want to tell you that he didn't prepare an outline. He didn't even know that all these uh, thousands of people were gathered together. He didn't know that they will be mocking. He didn't know that this would be their reaction or this would be their response. It, 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 they were watching that. They didn't even know it was that moment and that hour, the Holy Ghost and the power will come upon them. But Jesus had said, when that Holy Ghost, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth is come, it will bring to your remembrance everything i have said unto you that's one thing not only that it will guide you into all truth and it will show you reveal things you didn't know it will reveal it unto you yes i understand the spoken tongues there great wonderful speaking in tongues but something greater than speaking in tongues is what you'll find here immediately 
the people gathered together and just stood up. And all the words came. Everything you ought to say came. And he said, this is that. Unprepared. Not premeditated. And then the revelation came immediately. That's the Holy Ghost. You know Peter. And you know the, all the times. You know, when Jesus was crucified. And then he said, you are one of them. Fear paralyzed him. Fear made him to forget. All the promises and commitment he made to the Lord. But the Holy Ghost came and powered him. Holy Ghost has come. Power has come. And then he said, this is that revelation. The Holy Ghost guiding them into all truth and making the appropriate application immediately. And then you find in Acts verse 17, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants. And on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall tell me, prophesy. It came to him immediately. When you have this Holy Ghost, the appropriate word will come to you immediately. And then the interpretation will come to you immediately. Everything you have had before, everything you have known before, and you're saying, how can I get that back? I don't have a chance to get my notes now. Everything will come because of the presence of the Holy Ghost. He is the author of this scripture. And because he is the author, he is also the instructor. He is also the interpreter. And he will give us all that we need to know about the scripture. When that Holy Ghost is present and preeminent and prominent in our lives and our Ministry. We're looking at Joel. We're looking at where Peter took that from. And without having a copy of the Bible in his hand, he just quoted it just like that. And that's what the Holy Ghost will do. He'll make you keep to the scriptures. It will remind you of the scriptures. It will interpret the scriptures unto you. It will remind you of things you have had before that you are forgetting. And then it will guide you into the application at the proper time to the people at the right time. We're looking at Joel chapter 2, verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days I will pour out my spirit. It tells us then that the Lord is going to do this and, and that's what he said. He said this promise is unto you and it's unto your children, and it's unto, tell me the rest, all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call, that promise is coming upon you. I say it's a universal promise. Was it Peter alone that knew that far away in the Old Testament? Even Moses, that was his passion, his desire. In Numbers chapter 11 verse 29, Numbers chapter 11, we're reading from verse 29, and David, uh, uh, Moses desired that for the people of God too, and he said, all, everybody, no exception, and you are part of that everybody. It's coming upon you today in Jesus' name. Numbers chapter 11, verse 29, and Moses said unto him, envious thou for my sake, would God that all of all the Lord's people were prophets. He said, would God, how I desire, how I pray, how I wish that all of God's people were prophets and that the Lord will put a spirit upon them, upon them all. That's the same thing, universal promise of God. They are pouring of the Holy Ghost and the empowering by the Holy Ghost the energizing by the Holy Ghost that that will happen to everybody it says I would, I pray, I wish that all of God's people will become prophets who are prophets the people that receive revelation from God and they give that revelation back to the people and they reveal the mind of God the word of God, he said I wish all of God's people were preachers were prophets, were pastors and then the Lord will pour his spirit upon them and they'll declare the word of God without favor, without fear in the power of the Holy Ghost, the day has come. The time has come. 
and the Lord will do it for you, for me, for us together in Jesus' name. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 40 for Isaiah chapter 40 for this universal promise of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon you, upon me, upon every one of us. And the Lord says, everyone that is thirsty, everyone that is desiring, everyone that is asking, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon them. Isaiah chapter 44 verse 3. And I, for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. Any thirsty person here today? Praise the Lord, you'll get it. And floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. And my blessing upon thy offspring. It's coming. In chapter 59 of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 59, we're reading from verse 21. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 21, as for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord, my spirit which is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed, says the Lord, from henceforth and forever when the holy ghost comes how long will he stay with us forever, forever. tell me again forever. tell me once again forever. forever what you are getting today you are never going to lose forever. will increase and flow and overflow in your life in your ministry in jesus name and when the time comes the time of challenge and the time of ministry to be able to get that word out to the people in the power of the Holy Ghost. That Holy Ghost will manifest himself in your ministry and life at that situation, that time, in Jesus' name. We're looking at Matthew now, chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3, and then now we're told the title or the name of this sin that the Lord is going to put upon you and going to put upon us all. Everybody say, all. And say, I am part of that all. God bless you, you'll be part of that. In Matthew chapter 3, Matthew chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 8. Matthew chapter 3, we're reading from verse 8. It says, bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Again, can you look up for a moment? I'm saying that, you know, these uh, prophets, uh, you know, some things they say. The people there, uh, they'll, be, they'll be saying, how possible is this? How can this be? I'm, I'm, I'm believing that even if you go to ask the people, you go to ask John, John the Baptist, can you explain this to me that you said that God is able to raise up stones to become children unto Abraham. And John might say, well, I remember I said that. To raise up stores and then make them children unto Abraham. Well, I know that God is able to do all things. Maybe that's what he'll stop. But we know that God said he'll take the stony heart out of those are the stones. The people that hear the word of God and it's like water that you know, gets on the stone never gets inside. And the people that hear the word of God and it has no impact on them and no result on them. And it's like you just pour water on the stone and you knock it, you put fire even on it and the fire will not affect the stone and the knocking will not affect the stone and no instruction will affect the stone. And then God says, I'm going to make those stony hearts. I'm going to make them my children and I'm going to take the stony heart out of them and give them hearts of flesh and they will be mine. And when I do that, I'll pour my spirit upon them. And then it goes on to say also in verse 10, now the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn that is cut down and cast into the fire. Now comes your promise. I said, now comes your promise. He says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall, he shall, he shall baptize you, he shall baptize me with the Holy Ghost and with fire. You know, when we have this Holy Ghost, uh, you know, what I said is, you know, there are people that, you know, it's, it's speaking in terms of the initial evidence. 
not the final evidence is the initial evidence there's a continuing evidence the fire the fervency look at elijah it's not just the literal fire that came but look at his spirit a fiery fervent man and when they pray when such people pray you can see the fervency you can see the fire when such people preach, you can see the fire, you can see the fervency. When such people stand on a particular subject, you can see the fire, you can see the fervency. That's what you say when they stand before the enemy and they declare the truth before their persecutors. You can see the fire, you can see the fervency. That continuing evidence of the presence and the power and the prominence of the Holy Ghost in a person's life is more than, you know, these uh, Pentecostal churches that just come together and all they do is, you know, speak in tongues, speak in tongues, speak in tongues. And it's a repetition of what they have spoken for about 10 years. They say once, uh, you know, they feel like they want to speak in tongues again, they just bring it out again. It's like something I put in the box and they bring it out. And then when temptation comes, there's no fire, there's no fervency. When understanding of the Bible is needed, there's no understanding of the Bible. And when you need to explain, ask a question in the Bible, there's no proper answer. To the, they don't know. It's only speaking in tongues. That's only the initial evidence for the fire of the Holy Ghost and the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon us. That is what we need. And thank God it has come. Amen. I said it has come. Amen. Uh, you know, uh, the, those of us uh, who wear shoes, now if you wear shoes, this shoe that you lace, that's, it says uh, whose shoes are not, you know, able to even uh, put the lace on, then that string there. Now, if there's something there, just underneath that string, we'll call it tongue. That's the tongue of that shoe. You understand? What if, uh, you know, somebody has only the tongue of the shoe and it doesn't have the shoe itself? And it's only carrying, you know, he puts the, you know, the tongue on the something there, and he's just walking barefoot and say, what's that? It's the tongue of my shoe, because the tongue of my shoe is the most important. And then I just put it there. I say, but you're not wearing shoes. I said, then never mind, the tongue is there. The Holy Ghost is what you need. The power of the Holy Ghost is what we need. And the fire and the fervency and the inspiration, illumination, enlightenment in the knowledge of the word of God that we never knew before. And then when we look at that word, it comes afresh with power and with pungency unto us. And then we declare it without fear, without favor. And the people, they are asking, what shall we do to be saved? That evidence of making the people get under conviction and calling upon the Lord as they hear the word of God that is the greatest evidence of the Holy Ghost in our lives and we're all going to have that in Jesus name it says I did baptize you with water unto repentance but he that cometh after me is mightier than I whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire Let's look now at uh, John chapter 14. John chapter 14. And the promise is, you know, being expanded and explained and expounded unto us. We're looking at John chapter 14. And we're reading from verses 16 and 17. It says, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that she may abide with you. How long? Tell me out loud. Uh, have you ever seen some, you know, tongue-talking people and filled with the Holy Ghost and filled with the Holy Ghost and then when something happens, they don't have anybody to encourage them. And there's no voice on the inside that is encouraging them. And when they get into sorrow, into some traumatic situations, there is nobody to comfort them and there is no comfort from within. And then there are the people that are, you know, I, I can go to a church today. I don't think I can even read the Bible because, you know, this happened and this happened and this happened. And there's no comfort for them. And the Holy Ghost that it, they say is living inside them never says a word, never comforts them, and never tells them, get up. This is the reason this has happened. This is the reason this has happened. You don't need to lose your conviction or your consecration. You don't need to lose your life. Think about people that say they have the Holy Ghost and they're committing suicide 
because a problem that has happened and I didn't see any pastor, I didn't see any comforter, I didn't see any help and they still speak in tongues and speak in tongues and the more they speak in tongues, the more they have all these nightmares and all these things and, and feel what the Holy Ghost, when the Holy Ghost comes, he is a comforter and he says in that verse 16 and he says, I will pray the Father and he shall give you who? Another comforter that she may abide with you forever. No wonder Paul and Silas began to sing the praises of the Lord in the prison when their feet went the stalks, they had the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost was comforting them. When we have the Holy Ghost, yes, the initial evidence, I'll tell you again, the initial evidence is speaking in tongues of the comfort of the Lord in your life. And the comfort of the Holy Ghost in everything that you are passing through. This is happening and the Lord is explaining to you that's why that is happening. And that other thing is happening. What will bring confusion normally? What will bring depression normally? Then the Holy Ghost comforts you and it says, this is the reason for that. And then you are still able to go on. You are going to have that comforter. And know that comforter that she may abide with you. How long? Even the spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive, because it saith him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be where? In you. It shall be in you. That means that when your wife is, you know, trying to, you know, say this and that, the Holy Ghost is there, nearer to you than all your enemies. And because of that, you know, the fire is there, the comfort is there, the hope is there, the expectation is there, the faith is there, the word is there, the scriptures are there, the truth is there. What else do you need? We need the Holy Ghost. I said we need the Holy Ghost. It's telling us in chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 7. If we're looking in chapter 16, verse 7, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient, it is profitable. For you that I go away, for if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send, tell me the next thing, him, not it. There are some people that think that the Holy Ghost is like, uh, you know, the air, it's like the force, it's like, you know, whatever it is, that it doesn't have personality, of course, it, he has personality. Because the Father, the Son, and then the Holy Spirit, as the Father has personality, he has personality. As the Son has personality, he has personality too. He said, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. He will reprove the world of sin. You know what he's telling us? When you have the Holy Ghost, if you see sin anywhere, in anyone, in the church, outside the church, you will reprove that sin. It's not you. It's the Holy Ghost within. They say, I don't understand. Brother so-and-so, pastor so-and-so, anything, anytime he sees, anything that is sinful, defiling, anything that is corrupting, he cannot keep quiet. I don't know. Even when, you know, you are telling him, say, mm-hmm. Okay, that's right. I hear you. Immediately, when you finish, then there's something that rises up within him. It's the Holy Ghost. Many people don't understand. And they think that the people that never talk against sin, never reproach sin, and the people they can see, you know, stealing going on right there in front of them. They can see immorality going on there, adultery going on there in front of them. And there's, some, there's no fire within. Everything is just cool and calm. And they're saying, well, people are people. People will do what they want to. Let's, let's move on. Forget about all that. That's not the Holy Ghost. If those people turn around and then they begin to speak it, I say, hey, that's false. The evidence of the Holy Ghost is within you. It's that if you see sin, he will reprove the world of sin. And a, a, a preacher, a pastor, a minister, a leader that has the Holy Ghost dwelling within him, it will not just be in a church and you have worldliness there, sin there, evil there, corruption there, um, you know, kind of pregnancy there, abortion there. I mean, pregnancy with those teenage girls and we're just, you know, just having a crouch there and it's just saying, well, we love everybody. Well, I hope you, you know, settle all these problems and all these challenges. That you, you know, if you think about your future, 
this uh, pregnancy may hinder your education. It will not say this pregnancy may you know hinder your eternal life and hinder hinder your heaven, may hinder your education, but you know, take care of yourself and mother, don't you know it has happened, it has happened. Just 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 keep cool and uh, you know just have the grace of God to manage everything. That's the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost comes, he puts the fire within you that you will not tolerate sin. You will not encourage sin. Now that you're going to gloss over sin, that's the presence of the Holy Ghost. All oh, these churches, I don't understand them. They have the Holy Ghost, they have the Holy Ghost. And you see a lot of things there. You know, so somebody came to tell me and said that they went for a particular, to a particular place. You have all these uh, hundreds of thousands of people. And as they, you know, they were there and they shouted, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, and every as they were coming out, you know, somebody, you know, just uh, put light on a cigarette and started to smoke. And then they went to ask somebody, they said, ah, look at this, that uh, the Holy Ghost is on all of us. That's what they said. And all, the, the volume was speaking in tongues everywhere, everywhere. And then I saw somebody, immediately we came up, he just put uh, something in. Uh, yes, uh, you know, that's what God said. That he will pour his spirit upon all flesh, upon smoking flesh, upon drinking flesh, upon adulterous flesh, upon fornicating flesh, upon stealing flesh, upon all flesh. Do you believe that? There's repentance before that Holy Ghost will come. There's righteousness before that Holy Ghost will come. We need to understand so that we're not deceived. I pray you'll not be deceived. Come back to John chapter 16. I'm reading the in verse 8. And when he's come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not in me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged already. I have yet many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of, tell me, you know, the kind of false doctrine, error you find among these tongue talking people. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. The error, the false doctrine, the mutilating of scripture and the corruption of scripture that you find in the midst of such people, terrible. That means then that is not the real thing. When the real thing, the Holy Ghost, when it comes, what it says, when that Holy Ghost comes in his power, when the Holy Ghost comes in his illumination, when the Holy Ghost comes in his revelation, it says what he's going to do is, is the spirit of truth to start with, he will guide you into what? Into all truth. Gather all the Pentecostal churches in this land together. And ask them the same question. How does a person get saved? This Pentecostal church will tell you one thing. Well, this will tell you another thing. This will tell you another thing. This will tell you another thing. By the time you finish, you are confused. Get all the Pentecostal churches together and ask them, is there sanctification? Okay, if there's sanctification, what is the meaning? What's the experience of sanctification? Ask Pentecostal church number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, all of them. They're going to give you different answers to that sanctification. Do you believe that Jesus Christ will take his people away in the rapture? And then after that, there will be the great tribulation. Which one is false? Rapture or great tribulation? As Pentecostal church number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, they're going to give you different answers. But come back to the Bible now. It says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide, tell me, you into what? all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that he shall speak and he will show you things to come eschatology things to come he'll show us and that's the reason why we're saying that don't, don't waste your time running here running there running to all these places because if they have the real holy ghost they'll come back to the bible 
the scripture will be at the center of the worship and the scripture will be at the center of the lives of the families of the ministers of the members of that whole church and then the evidence of the holy ghost will go out in the power of the lord and will go and preach the gospel the real gospel and people right left center everywhere will be giving their lives to the lord i pray it will start here it will start with you because the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call number two demanding god's unlimited provision demanding god's unlimited provision we're looking at luke chapter 11. luke chapter 11 we're reading from verse 5. luke chapter 11 verse 5 the lord is talking about prayer here he's talking about asking and receiving you are going to ask today and you are going to receive in jesus name from verse 5 and he said unto them which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him friend let me three loaves for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me and i have nothing to set before him and he from within shall answer and say trouble me not the, the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give the I say unto you. Though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend. Yet because of his. Because of his. Tell me because of his. Importunity. Was importunity asking and asking and asking was importunity standing for more than one minute more than five minutes more than ten minutes and asking until you receive was importunity repeating that same thing oh lord you promised me this and you said this is unto all flesh i cannot go except i have this power i cannot go except i have this function what can i be if i don't have this anointing oh you ask from this direction lord it is the it is the bread for your children i'm one of your children lord it is your promise lord it is what will give me the equipment and the authority and the power the fire to be able to get the work done lord without it i will fail lord if i don't have this why am i a minister why am i a pastor if i say i believe the scripture and the promise is unto me and i don't have this so lord what will i do how will i be able to do the work you are committed to my hand you ask from this angle from the legal angle oh lord you said so you said it's your covenant and you will not fail you say it from the family angle you will give it to all your children you see from the employment angle you employed me and you put me